Genesis chapter 32 and verses 22 is where we're going from. I'm going to be uh, revisiting a character that uh, we did a couple of months ago, spent some time on. His name's Jacob. Jacob had been on the run from his brother. Jacob had a twin called Esau. In his younger years, he did a couple of things. Number one, he stole the birthright. That, that was the, the right to the inheritance from his brother. Although he was a twin, uh, the older brother got it and uh, his brother was only a few minutes earlier than him. So uh, unfortunately, because he stole it from his brother, convinced him, his brother was pretty upset by that. But when dad died, dad laid hands upon and at that moment, you know, he was blind. Uh, and Jacob dressed as his brother. And uh, his dad laid hands upon him. He could only do it to one of the, the, the kids. And Jacob got that. Well, you know what? So as far as Esau was concerned, uh, his twin brother had done him wrong, stole the inheritance, stole the blessing. And uh, there's a death warrant on his life. I mean, wanted posters everywhere, dead or alive. So, so Jacob flees. And he flees for a significant time to another region, ends up marrying a, uh, two sisters, uh, and God speaks to him and tells him, I want you to return back to the place that you were raised and uh, I'll prosper you in that place. And so on his journey back, I mean, he's freaking out. I mean, he's got this moment, he's got sons, he's got servants, he's got possessions. God blessed him at that time. And uh, on his return, I mean, he's freaking out. He's got fear running through his veins. And we come here to Genesis 32, Verses 22, it says this, That night Jacob got up, took his two wives, his two female servants, his 11 sons, and he crossed the fort of Jabok. And after he'd sent them across the stream, he sent them over with his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he was wrestling him, right? In other words, that hip was detached. It was a, uh, I mean, it just came out of the socket. Bad moment. Uh, and then the man said, let me go for it is day back. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he replied. The man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you've struggled with God and with humans and overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you seek my name? Then he blessed them there. So Jacob called the place Penel, saying that it was because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Penel, and he was limping because of his hip. I may have mentioned this before, but for those that haven't seen this, I want you to just understand what took place on this day. So Jacob shows up, he's got his wives, his servants, his children, he sends them across the other side of the river. And when they walk away, they look at him and as they walk away, he walks away like everyone else. That night he wrestles. He wrestles with a supernatural entity. Now I have lent into this before, but I wanna go down a pathway I've not done before. But he wrestles with this entity that uh, some say was Jesus reincarnated, some say it was an angel. I just wanna say it was a supernatural being at that time. And there's a wrestle that takes place. How many heard me speak about this particular moment, right? Three hands, right? Two hands, right? So, so there he is in a wrestle with this supernatural being and, and the, 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 the spiritual entity that's there said, let me go. And I mean, he, he's not gonna let go of him at that particular moment. And what happens is, is that in that moment, in that wrestle, he touches his hip. That, that hip is detached. That it, I mean, it's just taken out of its socket. And, and what happens is when that moment's over, now for the rest of his days, he's got a limp. Now, as far as the sons and the wives are concerned, there he is walking like everyone else. But when he comes back the next day after encountering a supernatural being, he comes back with a limp. His life is never the same again. And what happens is this, is that when you get into the presence of God, especially when you start wrestling with a supernatural being that we call Jesus Christ. 
when we wrestle with the Holy Spirit, what happens is our lives are never the same again. You'll find that your walk changes. You walk in one way, but you come out a different person. You come out walking, you come out talking like you've never walked and talked before. When I was 19 years of age, I knew religion. I knew how to do church. I knew how to clap at the right time. I knew when to lift my hands at the right time. I knew the protocol of church. Come on, it doesn't take long for you to figure out the protocol of church. But what I found was that when I got in a place where I had to wrestle with God, when the Holy Ghost turned up in my bedroom, I went in one way, I came out another way. And ever since that day, my, my life has been marked. If you knew me on the other side of that, there's probably one person in this room that knew me on the other side of that, and that's my amazing wife. But on the other side of that was a guy that kind of showed up to church, but really had no relationship with God. He lived a double life, one thing on Sunday, another thing Monday through Saturday, but can't turn up looking holy, dressing holy, acting holy like everything's good and fine, but really another guy, you're hearing what I'm saying. But ever I came out of that place, my life was never the same again. And I've discovered that there are so many different things that we have to wrestle with. I'm probably at some point in the future gonna do an entire series about this. But how many know that we just have to wrestle with stuff in life? Like, like it would it'd be nice how good would it be if life was just like silver platter? Here it goes, Randy. Like, like you know, your business, you want to prosper in your business, silver platter. But no, 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 you've got to wrestle. You've got to work. You've got to hustle. You've got to do some stuff. You're hearing what I'm saying? It's like, like, like you know, there was a time a beautiful girl came into your world and be nice if just showed up. And a, but, but he had to kind of work himself. I mean, he looked good and get past that part and he had to kind of prove himself. You're hearing what I'm saying? There's things we've got to wrestle with. There's a thing called temptation that we've got to deal with. Temptation. Every one of us in this room has to deal with temptation. We have to deal with and, and wrestle with the fact that, you know what, we're going to be individuals that, that are, at times are going to be tempted to do something we don't want to do. Well, you know, <laughs> on the... In the in the spirit, we don't want to, but in the flesh, we want to. It's like, yes, do it now. Go. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? But everything inside, but your spirit man's like, don't do that. Don't do that. And there's a wrestle there. I don't have time to lean into that. We have to wrestle with disappointment. Disappointment. See, see we're called to be people of faith. Okay. And so that means that my faith level's here but the life delivery is here, right? Faith is here. I'm believing for best. I'm believing for those prayers to be answered. I'm believing for God to come through in my life, but sometimes the delivery is a little lower. How many know what I'm talking about? And that gap is frustration, disappointment that we have to deal with on a regular basis. So I know that God heals, but my body's still catching up with that. You hear, hear what I'm saying, right? Like I know God wants to prosper me by a bank account. But those, those, those bills coming in, you, you're seeing what I'm saying. We've got to wrestle with that stuff. But what I want to talk about is something that I had to wrestle with, and that was the wrestle with the supernatural. Because I had read the Scripture. And remember, I'd been raised in a very traditional background, and I'd read the Scriptures and I'd seen the miracles that Jesus did. Blind eyes opening, deaf ears hearing, the lame were walking, the tongues that were tied, they started talking. Those that were dead would come alive. Incredible miracles that took place. And I looked at that in the Scripture, but I'd show up to the house of God. And I might mention it once in a while, but I'd never seen God show up at all. And so after that wrestle, at 19 years of age, I just wanted to see miracles. I didn't realize it at the time, but I needed to be an individual that had to wrestle with some of these things. Some things happen quickly. There are other times, one of the things, and I, for time's sake, I'm just gonna go straight there. I wanted to see someone get out of a wheelchair. I was believing God to get out of a wheelchair. 
I'd seen it in a large meeting. It would have been 20,000 people in a particular place. And I remember in the place watching a guy that had never walked before in a wheelchair come down the front, stand up and start walking. I mean, on the inside of me, everything. Woo! Pumped. But, but I, I wasn't satisfied with that. I mean, Jesus can do it. The evangelist can do it. But can I, can, can I, I see the Scripture said that I would do greater things than what Jesus did if I just believe. So why not me? Why can't God work through my life and see healing take place? I remember driving down the road one day, I was doing a mission trip and driving down the road and there's a girl that was in a wheelchair now, this was on a, a very populated street. It was holidays, uh, vacation time. Uh, and, and literally, there were hundreds of people up and down the street, Waiheke Island. And, and there it was. You know what I'm talking about, right? There, there we had uh, this, this, uh, this street. Place was filled. And as I'm driving, I see this girl. She'd probably be early 20s in a wheelchair going down the road. And, and I was like, I'm going to get her out of that wheelchair. So I pulled the car over. I got out of the car. I said, excuse me. I said, I'm going to get you out of that wheelchair. I said, I'm going to pray for you. And Jesus is going to pull you out of that wheelchair. And she's just looking to me. I had no conversation with her. I just looked at her. I went over to her. I closed my eyes and said, Father. And you can understand, there are stacks of people all up and down that space. And I just was bold as you're hearing me now. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command this girl to get out of the wheelchair and walk in Jesus' name, right? I opened my eyes and I'm like, where is she? Did she get raptured? What, what took place? She wasn't there. But she's way down the road trying to get away from me. It's like, I mean, who's this crazy guy? And everyone was looking at me like, loser. And I'm, I'm looking and people go, what? And got in the car and drove away and frustrated. I wanted to see someone get out of a wheelchair. I remember a time where, uh, now this is before I was married. I was living at home and I'm, I'm driving home about 100 meters from my house. And I, I, as I'm going up the road, I see this guy that's in a wheelchair. And this is a guy probably one or two years older than me. I never knew, necessarily knew uh, his name, probably never talked to him, but he was always that guy uh, that was at that fish and chip shop, something we have down that part of the planet. And there'd be like, uh, in those days, uh, asteroids, uh, Space Invader, um, Pac-Man, uh, the, the arcade games, they were the games of the time there. He was the guy that was always there. I could never get in there because he'd lined up his, those days, 20 cent pieces was what got you a game, right? Not what they charge you today, but I mean, there, there he was going up the road. And I was like, man, I, I want to pull that guy. I want, I want to see him healed. Like, so I'm like, like after, and I know I've got plenty of other stories of knockbacks, praying for people. So this time I'm like, I better ask Jesus. So, so I'm driving up the road. I see him. God, should I pray for him? I go up my driveway, I park the car, turn the car off. Everything's silent in my car. And I was like, should I pray for him? And I felt like the Lord say to me, turn the stereo on. Now, this is in the day where we had what they call uh, tape cassettes, right? You probably have no idea what we're talking about. It's just like a plastic little, you know, thing. Uh, tape cassette was in there. I turned that th thing on. And there was a preacher on there. His name was Robert Sleard. And he said, are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you ashamed to go up to that cripple and tell him to get out of his wheelchair? If you are, you'll never get the miracle you've been asking for. Turn it off. I mean, it's clear as day. I prayed. I felt God speak to me. Turned the stereo in obedience. And I had the word of the Lord come to me. It's like, shoot. <laughs> all right, so, okay, God. Now, what, I'm, what I do at that moment, I was like, I, I need to definitely hear from God. God, if that was really you, right? <laughs> Uh, if that was not good enough, if that's really you, I need to know. Was that you? I need to know. I just clearly need to know if that was you. And uh, I was like, you know, seen an angel. Maybe Jesus can pop out of a cloud. I don't know, an angel just put, you know, credit. I don't know how I was going to do it. But none of that happened. I was like, well, I'm going to go down. 
If I don't find them, I won't pray for them. But if I find them, I will pray for them, obviously. So I go down the road, can't see them. And as I'm coming back up the road, I notice them in a garage. And he's there, there was about 15 other guys. He's at Chucky's house. Chucky is two years younger than me. Chucky has just left school. In fact, he, I, I knew that he'd just come out of prison three months uh, for drug trafficking. It was his first offence that he'd been caught with. And so he'd done time. This is a guy at school you, you never mess with. This is a guy for fun. He always had 15 guys around him. And after school, he would find bully me faces. <laughs> you know what a bully me face is? It's like some people have just got that face. I was one of those faces. You're just like, if you're going to bully anyone, you find a bully me face and you bully that one, right? I mean, if they look tough, you don't deal with them. But if you've got a bully me face, you go after that. So, so they, would, they would just kind of, for fun, beat you up. So this is that guy. He's at Chucky's house. Chucky knew who I was. We lived 100 meters from each other. We kind of kept space. Well, I kept space from him. Uh, he's at Chucky's house. Chucky's got 15 guys there. He's just come out of jail and the drinking beer. And we're not talking about small bottles. We're talking about the big, large DB bottles, right? The big, big bottles drinking away. I can see that some of them are drunk. They're in the garage playing pool, hanging about, drinking. Oh, Jesus. So I park the car right outside the house. I get out of the car. Jesus, protect me. Get out of the car and I walk up. Chucky sees me. He knows who I am. Remember, we've known each other all our life, 100 meters from each other. He goes, hey, bro, what are you doing here for? Remember that? And, and uh, I said, uh, I've come to give him a message. And I pointed the guy in the wheelchair. The guy said, who's the message from? <laughs> I said, it's from Jesus Christ for you to get out of your wheelchair and walk. And he said, I'll go and get and he did this language and he dropped a few words that maybe you may not be aware of and maybe it's not the appropriate place to say it. These, 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 you know, these things. And I mean, he, he told me what it was about. <laughs> Chucky and the boys walked over to me, literally surrounded me. I, I mean, this is not a good place to be in. These are guys that fight for fun. And I've turned up on their drinking party. And now one of the guys, and he just happens to be a cripple, is upset with me. They surround me. I start telling them about Jesus. God's presence shows up. As you're feeling right now, the power of God showed up on that front yard. I start telling them about Jesus. They open up. Start telling them about what God's done for them. When that window of time came to an end, I looked at him, I said, hey, you want me to pray for you? Because he wants you to get out of that wheelchair. He said, no. Nah. He said, you know where I am, I'm up the road. Chucky goes, hello, bro. See you later, man. So get in the car and I'm like, man, God, like you were really clear. It didn't happen. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling with the supernatural because I wanted God to do something in and through my life. And I could literally go for an hour, two hours, a one story after another of me wrestling, praying for people in wheelchairs, praying for other miracles to take place and nothing taking place. We're running a conference, a youth conference. We had 1,200 people at this particular conference. And the guest speaker on that particular day, if you're sick, come to the front. We'll have people come through, pray for you. But what happens is, is that people are going through laying hands on people. And there's a lady, she's 22 years of age, we found out in a wheelchair, never walked in her life. We laid hands on those legs. I could feel no muscles there at all. Nothing. I'd seen other pastors lay hands, nothing. I said, you're gonna do something you've never done before. And I called another youth pastor over to grab hold of the other side and I, we picked her up, legs are just dangling. So you're gonna do something you've never done before. What happens is, is that at that moment, what happens is we just start walking and those legs are just dragging along. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, bring healing to these legs. And as we're walking, the cool thing is that she got lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until she pushed us away for the first time in 22 years of her life. There she was standing on her own two feet. 
I mean, the place went electric. I don't have time to tell you some other stories. Other people that got out of wheelchairs, other miracles that took place. But I wanna tell you, I had to wrestle. And then when you look in 1 Corinthians and you look through the gifts of the Spirit that God gives us, one of those gifts is called the working of miracles. Did you hear that? The working of miracles. There are some miracles that need to be worked. And we are people that kind of like this instant generation, if it's not gonna happen now, then maybe I'm just gonna throw it aside. I'm gonna give up. Maybe it's not God's will for me to be healed. Maybe it's not God's will for me to prosper. Maybe it's not God's will for this business to go somewhere. Maybe it's not God's will for this marriage to get through what we're going through. Come on, we can have these things, these thoughts go through our minds. But come on, we gotta wrestle with this stuff. There's a real enemy out there that's trying to stop us from becoming everything that He's created us to become. Power of God is in this place. In the final moments of the service, what I want us to do is I want us to just have a bit of a wrestle. If I could have the band come up right now. 